gentlemen, Paul Schaefer and the orchestra. Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest is an actress, singer, comedian, and she is also the widow of comedian Ernie Kovacs. Kovacs was a true TV pioneer in an era when performers like Milton Berle and Sid Caesar were basically recreating vaudeville shows on television. He was experimenting with the new medium. On the air from 1950 until his untimely death in 62, he has been called the very first video artist. Please welcome a woman who is helping America rediscover the marvelous talents of Ernie Kovacs, Edie Adams. Hi, Edie, how are you? Nice to see you. Have a seat, if you will. Tell me about uh, Mr. Kovacs uh, off camera. What was uh, this man like to be around? Oh, he was, uh, you know, same at home, a little crazy, crazier, yeah. you know, ups and downs, Hungarian. How, how can I explain? Hungarians that? ups and downs? Is that yes, the, the, you know, gloomy Sunday and then uh, really as, as loud as you laugh, that's how you're going to cry the next day. But he would do things. Now, I'm a, a nice white bread Presbyterian and I meet this crazy mad man with a mustache and a cigar and a foreign name and I took him out to, uh, to meet my parents in Tenafly. And, uh, they were probably crazy about this. Uh, they, <laughs> they a were comedian. Sideways. And anyway, he, um, it was a very hot day, as only New Jersey can eat. And he kept talking about how he'd like a big gin and tonic, a real big. And we were driving across the bridge. He said, I'd mean a real big gin and tonic. So he gets about Englewood. We're going to Tenafly, where he used to live. And he stopped in a pet shop. And he got a fish bowl. And uh, kept driving, and he went to another place and got a bag of ice, and then went to a liquor store and got some gin, some tonic, and some wine. <laughs> and he indeed, made himself a fishbowl of gin and tonics. And said, "Oh," I said, "Now that's better." Yeah. They didn't understand him. That's a, that's not a bad <laughs> idea, though. A fishbowl, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was, uh, pretty good. Uh, did, was he? Did he enjoy? Was he a serious drinker? I, I mean. No, I tell you, he used to wake up high. He would wake up so high that he was afraid to take an aspirin because it would push him over the edge. You know, he'd wake up and say, man, that's the greatest coffee. That's the greatest orange juice. That's the greatest everything. Oh, so he, he would just start his day on a, yeah. not, not he, under the influence of anything, but just excited. If he drank or didn't drink, didn't matter. Yeah. You know, he, would, he was the same decibel of manic high all the way through. He just loved it. You know, yeah. He loved life. Uh, tell us about the, the uh, I tried to describe your television program at the beginning of this program, and I screwed it up completely. Really? <laughs> you tell us what it is and where people can see it. Well, this is on Showtime. It's a great, great show, and it's kind of a docudrama. It's not just a bunch of old clips. Uh, John Barber put them together, and John, as you know, created real people. And uh, I think that was a kind of a milestone in television, too. It kind of uh, had news and uh, human, you know, it just sort of created that kind of thing. So he put this together, and Chevy Chase is on it, saying some wonderful things about how his roots are uh, with Ernie. He used to watch as a kid and Jack Lemon, and uh, then different clips from different shows. And uh, I have a, a lot, about 200 more hours of this stuff put away. Yeah. At yeah. one point, um, he was very close to the crew, as you guys here are. I watch you a lot. My son Josh does, too. He loves it. And uh, the crew told me after uh, he died that they, he owed the network a lot of money because he used to spend a lot more than he made. He thought that was a neat way to go. And... Um, <laughs> I, he was right. Listen, I, I think it's terrific. And so they were using the tapes as used tapes just to, you know, to do the news and whatever. Right. Put and commercials uh, on, auditions, whatever. That's right. Whatever, just yeah. to say. So I um, bought back whatever it was. It's kind of like a wall of tape, and I don't even know what's on it. It's on two-inch tape, which you can't just reel off because right. it self-destructs. This is 20 years old, you know. So... Um, we, we are going to put them all together and see what we have on them on one inch tape and whatever. Okay, and we, you have brought uh, some of what you're uh, talking about with us. Uh, tell, tell us what we're going to see here. Well, now, which is the first? I don't know which clip. I know we brought some of the things uh, from the show, which will be seen this on is, November um, 13th at 7.30 on Showtime. This is what, sir? Parts of the old show. Parts of the old, show. Of the old show. Okay. okay, so this will, I guess, self-explanatory. Okay. Uh, at home, uh, use your television sets for extra viewing enjoyment. <laughs>
Now then, over here you turn your set on, of course. You get to your horizontal picture and you turn it just a little bit. Now watch, Steve, watch, watch what happens. <laughs> no, not too far, Kurt. No, 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 no. Now you're going the other way. You feel it? No, no. Right in the middle. Right That's fine. If you turn too far this way, you get too far that way. I don't know if we're on color or not tonight, but in case you just have a black and white set and don't have color, and we are in color. <laughs> he, uh, this was, this was experimentation, wasn't it? Because there really wasn't much precedent for this sort of thing, was there? No, um, and whatever he th was thinking about would get right on to that screen. Now, that last little gag was a little $12,000 joke. He saw yes. somebody on television in California that used to sell used cars, and one day the guy got a sledgehammer and bashed it in, so he just set that all up and touched it, and $12,000 right down the drain. I want to ask you about uh, cigars, and uh, I understand he purchased land in Havana at one point. Is that yes. correct? Right. Oh, yeah. We'll uh, do that. We have to pause here for a commercial. We'll be back with Edie Adams, folks. Edie Adams is here. We're talking about Ernie Kovacs. You mentioned he had a joke. Oh, yes, they were telling... Did they have a joke? I heard this the other day. I love it. The, what do 60 minutes and a Jewish mama have in common? 60 minutes. Uh, <laughs> I had to do it. I had to. I had to. Where were we? <laughs> uh, oh, tell me about the, uh, the time he bought uh, land in Havana. Um, well, he was very big at playing cards. And Ernie I guess Kovacs, this is. Uh, one yeah. a night, I guess, they all got together and decided that the only way to have all these wonderful, glorious cigars was to buy some land in Havana. So they took a couple of those big pots, I guess, and somebody went down and bought a hillside in Havana. And uh, they were all gloating, and when the next day uh, Castro took over and they took <laughs> nothing else came yeah, in and out. <laughs> yeah, uh, but that's a lot, of, a lot of money, I'm guessing, to buy a hillside in Havana. I guess so. We, money didn't mean too much in those High days. High stakes? Big gambler, this man? I guess so, yeah. yeah. Uh, -huh. uh We have some more videotape. This is, uh, I guess, just uh, an assortment of early shows. Is that what you understand this to be, Edie? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, let's take a look at some more of, uh, of some early things. Ernie Kovacs, folks. We were early. That's when the... First time I've seen a head of lettuce that had a swell head. Fucking for your own show, eh? Yeah. Yeah, uh, take a little bit of lettuce and gently drop it in here. Don't pad your part. I heard you sneak that line. And you just get enough of this to... I've never been able to straighten this thing out now. If I get that just about here, that, 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 that's much better, right about like that. A little more to the right. Um, what he uh, had a pretty good uh, rapport with the people who worked on shows with him, didn't he? Oh, yes. Everybody was part of the act. You had to be. We were in Philadelphia. That, these are clips from the early, early days. We uh, went on from 6 to 9 every morning live. And so we had to kill a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So we would, uh, whatever was around, you would throw him something and hit, hit him with a chicken, or, and then that would be a bit. And he'd say, we're going to do a spy sketch tomorrow, bring in the uh, uh, trench coat. I never knew what was coming up. And uh, we just sort of winged it all the way through. Now, were you, were you married to him at this time, or no, this was later uh -huh. that you got married? No, um, I met him uh, as a girl singer on the show. I knew po no popular music went down there and sang my song. I was a loser on the Arthur Godfrey show and went down and um, was on the show actually as the master of the 10 second fill whenever it was 10 seconds to commercial I'd hit him with something or wear a weird hat and he'd say what is that crazy girl doing in that hat just a second we'll be right back folks yeah. <laughs> how, how did he get along with network executives <laughs> they were a no-no he just didn't get along with them at all he didn't like anybody he didn't get along with uh, sponsors or publicity people or network people 
and that kind of left it real chilly in there, except for the crew, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is it true that on a, one occasion, perhaps, the, the crew took a, a, up a collection to take out ads about the show or a show that he was oh, yeah. involved in? Yeah, they were, they were really a neat bunch, every crew that we've worked with. But they did take an, uh, a collection and in a trade paper. It's never happened before or since. Another time they took a collection and gave him a party. But see, whenever he was there working with them, and we'd work, they'd work late, he would send out to Jason's or somewhere for food, and he'd order food for everybody. Yeah. He was uh, in a 91% tax bracket. That's something that doesn't now, exist now today. Now, explain that the other way. That means that out of every dollar, he got to keep how Nine much? Nine cents. Nine cents out of every buck. And uh, he was kind of a nice spendthrift Hungarian, and he figured, I earned that whole uh, $100. I don't want to give $91 back. Uh, we were talking about the crew and so forth. Uh, we, we have some uh, footage. There's a person that works on our show, who works on our show, that also worked uh, uh, with Mr. Kovacs. And we have this, uh, this is a vintage uh, videotape film. Uh, is, are these kinescopes that we're looking at here, actually? Yes, I think they're mostly kinescopes. Right, th this, uh, take a look and uh, see if uh, anyone comes to mind as you watch uh, some more of Mr. Kovacs here. Good morning, and welcome to another session with Mr. Question Man. All questions received by Mr. Question Man are carefully tabulated, and some of them are filed. And now for our first letter this morning, Mr. Willard Dribbins of Louisville, Kentucky writes, Dear Mr. Question Man, what, if anything, do the following three men have in common? Orville Wright, Eli Whitney, and Thomas Alva Edison. Oh, these three men do indeed have something in common. Not one of them was born on a Tuesday. <laughs> Mr. Henry Randolph Wilson of Brooklyn, New York. And of course, the lovable Bill Wendell, our announcer, Bill Kinnear. Come on over. Yum, yum, sure. Yum. Bill Wendell. Bill, have a seat. Thank you. Well, you look at... Um, can I ask you how old you were there, Bill, or not? I In, guess I can. Uh, mid twenties. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm still 29, so I don't know about that. What yeah. uh, you played cards with Ernie, didn't you? Every week after we did the night show from the Hudson Theater, Ernie had a group that would go to his apartment. That's when you lived up Central Park West. Right. right? Uh huh. We started to play maybe at 10 o'clock at night. Our usual group was Ernie, Mark Connolly, mm -hmm. who wrote Green Pastures, Barry Shear, the director, mm -hmm. and there was Marie Torrey's husband. I forget. Hal Friedman. Hal Friedman and one or two other Broadway producers. I don't know why I was in the game. Maybe Ernie paid me well, but he wanted to get it all back. And we played until 6 o'clock in the morning. Then, did you get it's up and a good, and clean make... living for all oh, these kids yeah. uh, watching in today. We had some great games. Now, Edie mentioned it bought some land out of one of those pots. What kind of door are we talking about here? Well, I, uh, I'm, I, I bought a book on how to play poker and I went into a game one night and I played it very very close to the vest and when I left about nine o'clock the next morning I had over four thousand dollars in cash in my pocket and I had approximately two to three thousand dollars in IOUs. Ha, my, Ernie my. was the fellow that would hold three cards and pull two to a straight. He was not a, a good card player. Not, not no. reckless, no. Card a reckless gambler. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now tell me about the pie. There seems to be a bit of a There's discussion a, yeah. here about he, the pie. He says it was one way. I know it was not. He, this is in Philadelphia, and Ernie was outside, very, very cold, and he was doing a political speech maker takeoff. And I, as I recall it, right. he said, "Okay, Bill, hit me with the pie." And pies, pie fights are usually done with you know paper plates and whatever. But this one came with an iron plate straight across, hit him sideways, and knocked him out. Now, Bill, you say true? that wasn't you. <laughs> the studio was located in the building, and they had about the fourth floor, they had a TV camera outside. And I'll tell you about it later because we're going to go away. Go away. Right. We'll be right back. Okay. He'll finish up the pie story. <laughs> Bill, thank you very much. Edie Adams, thank you very much. My thanks to Vic Gold and Bob Orban and uh, to the studio audience. Tomorrow night now, we will have uh, Bob Euchre from baseball and uh, Tom Dreesen. Have a good night. Thank you, folks. <laughs>